So Eileen Carol Warnos was born on February 26th, 1956 in Rochester, Michigan. Eileen had a very rough childhood. Like, she was born into sort of this disaster. She actually never met her biological father um, because he was in prison when she was born. He was a convicted child molester, a diagnosed schizophrenic, and actually ended up hanging himself in prison and committing suicide. Now, Eileen's mom, like, really was no better. Um, she actually abandoned her um, when Eileen was just barely four years old, and Eileen went to live with her grandparents. Now, it would be great if this was like the happy ending, and Eileen had a great childhood and a great life after this, but we wouldn't have a story if that were the case. So, um, Eileen's grandfather was a severe alcoholic and it was an angry alcoholic. In fact, he would often abuse her in multiple ways, but including sexually when he was drunk. She fell into sex work and selling her body very early in life. Um, she was selling her body for food, drugs, whatever, at just 11 years old. She was prostituting herself to her classmates, which is just, like, incomprehensible. Um, so Eileen was constantly running away from home, um, but I mean, like, who wouldn't be if you were being raped by your alcoholic grandfather? Like, I don't blame her for this. Um, so she would hitchhike quite often as well, um, which is what she was doing one night when she was 13 years old. She was trying to hitchhike home from a Halloween party that she had attended, and, um, her, one of her grandfather's friends actually picked her up, and he proceeded to rape her and beat her. And again, she was 13, so a lot of people could, um, you know, say that Eileen's case was like a nature versus nurture type of thing, but like, I have a hard time believing in, I do think that nurture has a lot to do with some of this stuff, and when you look back at serial killers, a lot of them had, like, terrible home lives, but at some point, like, you make your own decisions. So, sadly, um, Eileen ended up pregnant from this encounter, and she went to live at a home for unwed mothers. She was cared for until she gave birth. Um, she gave birth to a little boy at the age of 14, and that boy was placed up for adoption by the home right after birth. Um, so, like I said, like, this nature versus nurture thing, like, this whole case is so crazy, and there are still a lot, a lot of people who, like, stick up for Eileen and think that she stuck it to the men and all of that, but, like, she definitely was dealt a crap turd of a hand in life, but, like, adult Eileen had choices. So anyways, after the whole pregnancy, she returned to her grandparents for a very short time, but her grandmother um, unfortunately passed away when Eileen was 15 years old, and her grandmother was the only one that really wanted Eileen there. So after she passed away, her grandfather literally kicked her out, like, right after that. Eileen started doing some sex work, selling drugs, like, whatever she could to, um, survive. 
Um, and remember, this is, so she was 15, so this is like early 1970s when this is happening. Um, her grandfather turns her in and she actually gets sent to Adrian's girls school, which was an all girls school where she was sort of required to undergo different therapies and stuff like that. And she was declared a ward of the state at this time and would remain one until she was 18, so for about three years. So Eileen was like not okay with this all girls school and she actually tried to break out several times. Um, the first time was after breakfast. She was helping clean up and she ended up like bolting out the back door. She ran three miles before she was caught by one of the guards. Another time she snuck out at night um, and was like free for like three weeks and after she was caught um, the second time she made a deal with the school where if she stayed for 60 days and did all of her therapies that she would be let go and so that is what she did. Um, a lot of the other girls at the school say that they just did not like Eileen, that they were either scared of her or that they like just annoyed her because she was such a like know-it-all. So she's released from the school. She decides she can't stay in Michigan because she doesn't want to be a ward of the state. Um, so she decides to hitchhike down to Florida. This is when we start seeing Eileen get in trouble with the law. Um, when she was around this age, and so we're gonna talk about her early criminal history because I think it shows a clear picture of how crimes escalate um, with someone like this. Like, escalation is, as anybody who likes true crime knows, very dangerous in crime. So, the first time we know of that Eileen was arrested was when she was 18 years old. She was arrested in Colorado in Jefferson County for driving while intoxicated, disorderly conduct, and firing a pistol from a moving vehicle. In 1976, so Eileen was 20 years old at this time, she met a man named Lewis Fells in Florida. Now, Lewis was a, like, big time yacht club president, and so he was wealthy, and the two of them fell in love rather quickly and got married, like, within a very short time of knowing each other. Lewis was 69 years old, and again, Eileen was 20. The marriage literally lasted a couple of weeks, though, because Eileen took Lewis's cane and beat him over the head with it, which caused Lewis to get a restraining order. He was like, nope, not doing that, and he got a restraining order, and they later annulled their marriage. So Eileen left Florida and went back to Michigan and, like, started getting in trouble there as well on July 14th, 1976 at a club called Bernie's, which is in Mancelona, Michigan. She was arrested for throwing the cue ball at a bartender's head. Um, and then she goes off the radar for a couple of years. She had a minor drunk driving fine of like a hundred and fifty dollars in August of 1976, but then we don't hear about her again until May of 1981 when she was arrested in Florida for armed robbery. 
a, or she robbed a convenience store and she took $35 and two bags of cigarettes. So she ended up actually being sentenced to some jail time for the robbery. She spent just over a year in jail and then like literally a year later she um was trying to forge checks in florida so really like her rap sheet goes on and on in january 1986 she was arrested in miami for car theft resisting arrest and obstruction of justice. So then, in 1986, she meets who she called the love of her life, Tyria Moore. Um, so Tyria was a hotel maid, and they had met at a lesbian club, um, or a lesbian bar in Daytona Beach. They begin dating, and for all accounts, for a couple of years, there's not a whole lot of activity from either of them. Um, they get in a few, like, bar fights and stuff like that, but nothing, like, super intense until 1989. All of the sudden, Eileen goes on this rampage and she ends up killing seven men within 12 months. So like back to back to back murders. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the murders now and sort of just who they were, what she did to them, that sort of thing. So her first victim was a man named Richard Mallory. So he was 51 years old at the time of his death in 1989. And he was an electronics store owner in Clearwater, Florida. So Richard had actually solicited um, sex from Eileen on November 30th, 1989. And she claims that she killed him in self-defense. Richard did have some prior convictions related to sexual assault and domestic violence. So, yeah, and she maintained until the very end that this first victim did rape her. But his body was found on December 30, 13th, just under two weeks later, he had been shot several times with a 22 caliber pistol. Next was 47-year-old David Spears. So David was a construction worker and he was reported missing on May 19th, 1990, um, after not showing up for work. His body was found June First, along Route 19, he was naked and had been shot several times with a 22 caliber pistol. Charles Kastan, Cars Cadden, Charles Cars Cadden, I hope I'm saying that right, was 40 and he was a part time rodeo worker, which is like sounds so cool, but he went missing on May 31st, 1990, so literally 11 days after David Spears, he went missing, and his body was found on June 6th, 1990. He had been shot with, you guessed it, a 22 caliber pistol. Now, Eileen was actually seen driving his car and she had tried to pawn a gun that was registered in Charles's name. Peter Abraham. Um, Peter Abraham Seams was a 65-year-old retired merchant seaman. Um, in June 1990, he was driving from Juniper, Florida to Arkansas. He was on a little road trip and he didn't make it out of Florida. His, bod his car 
a 50 year old sausage salesman from Acala, Florida. His family reported him missing on July 31st, 1990, and his body was found August 4th. So we're already one, two, three, four. So since May 19th to July 31st, she has had four victims. Oh, just over that summer. Um, so his body was found August 4th along State Road 19, and he had been shot two times as well. Next was 56-year-old Charles Dick Humphreys. Um, he was a, this one, like, is crazy to me that she was able to subdue this man. He was a retired U.S. Air Force major, a former state child abuse investigator, and a former chief of police. And it's not like he was like elderly, he was 56, but he went missing on September 11th, 1990, and his body was found the next day on September the 12th. He had been shot six times as well with a 22 caliber pistol. The final victim was named Walter Antonio, and Walter was 62 years old and was a trucker. Um, now, because he was a trucker, you know, my dad was a truck driver. Sometimes you just don't hear from them for a while, so nobody really knows how long he had been missing um, before his body was discovered on November 19th. Um, he was naked and he was found on a remote logging road in Dixie County in Florida. He also had been shot four times. So literally all seven men were killed again within a 12 month period. It's, it's actually about 11 months with the same gun in, they were all killed in the same way. So Eileen was actually caught by happenstance. They weren't at that point um, necessarily looking at her for any major like murder or any major crime. She was actually arrested on January 9th, 1991 because she had an outstanding warrant for um, a like domestic dispute at a bar. Like she had not shown up for court and she was arrested. So they arrested her and her fingerprints were put like into the system and voila, they matched that palm print on Seams's car. Um, so she gets arrested, they get a match, and um, her girlfriend, Tyria, actually is sort of coerced, or like, I think she sort of does it freely um, into helping get a confession out of her. Um, so they take more back to, or Tyria, back to Florida, and they put her in a hotel room, and they're sort of watching what she's doing, and kind of tell her to, um, like, try to get her to say something. So she calls Eileen, like, over and over and keep saying that she's scared. Um, she doesn't want them to get her for anything. Like, she's just, like, really freaking out. Now, this actually, like, does something or, or hits a soft spot with Eileen. Um, again, she said to her death that Tyria was, like, the love of her life. So, what she does is she confesses. She calls three days later and confesses to all seven murders, which at this point, they only had her for, for seams, but she, nope, I killed 
all seven men, and she says that she killed each and every one of them out of self-defense. Now, there was, at that time, prostitution um, was a huge thing, and so she had this, like, big group of supporters who said, yeah, like, there's so many men out there that are abusive to prostitutes or sex workers, and, um, like, this woman just stuck up for us all, you know? So she had a lot of support, and still to this day has a lot of support. So she was tried first just for the murder of Mallory, which was the first man that she killed, um, which is interesting that they didn't charge her first with the murder that they had the handprint on, but they didn't. She was tried for Mallory, and she was actually found guilty um, on January 27th, 1992. Now, within this trial, she did have several psychiatrists evaluate her, and they all found her mentally unstable. So, apparently, there's this, like, chart of mental stability and um, it's you can get up to a score of 40 and as you get closer that's like like if you're a 40 you're a full blown psychopath so the closer you get to 40 the worse it is and sort of like under 20 like you're you know a normal like most people would score very low. Eileen scored a 32, which to um, all of these psychiatrists was very alarming. They diagnosed her with like borderline personality disorder and antisocial disorder. Also remember that her father was a diagnosed schizophrenic. Um, I have schizophrenia in my family history, so I know a little bit about it, and it is something that um, can be hereditary or whatever, so coming directly from her father, um, like, the, I don't know, that's just something to note there. However, even though the psychiatrists, um, said that she was not mentally stable, she was sentenced to death. Now, she was charged in all of the other murders, but she ended up pleading no contests. Um, and this is what she said. She said, I wanted to confess to you that Richard Mallory did violently rape me, as I've told you, but the others did not. They only began to. However, in May of 1992, she was given three more death sentences. Um, she ended up receiving six death sentences in total throughout, like, several different years of trials. She changed her story a lot over the years. It was everything from they raped me to... Um, they, they were trying to rob me, do I just kill them, like, several other things. She was incarcerated in Florida, and she tried to appeal her death sentence in 1996. However, it was denied, so she sat on death row in Florida. She says that the other inmate, or she said that the other inmates were like, really rude to her, and mean, and, and, like, taunted her, like, she had all these different complaints over the years, um, but, it, but it wasn't, you know, she, she didn't get anywhere with it. The final quote that she said publicly was, I killed those men, robbed them cold as ice, I would do it again, too. There's no chance in keeping me alive or anything, because I'd kill again. I have hate crawling through my system. I'm so sick of hearing this she's crazy stuff. I've been evaluated so many times. I'm competent. Same 
obviously hates human life and would kill again. Eileen Warnos was executed on October 9th, 2002 after having her final wish of food, which was simply a cup of coffee. And that's that. They are making a movie about Eileen. There's a trailer out now. Um, they actually cast uh, Peyton List, which is like the Disney, she was on like Bunked and um, Je Jesse. she was on a couple of Disney Channel shows. But she's going to play Eileen, which actually is scary accurate, like looks wise, but um, yeah, you can watch that trailer, you can search it on YouTube, it, like I'm, I'm gonna see that movie because like I just want to see like how they portray her life because again, 